All right, here we are with the final part of the vlog, the big one. This is the finished reveal. And generally speaking, I'm pretty happy uh, with the outcome. I'd give myself an eight out of 10 on this. Uh, there's a few things that I'm not super happy with, but generally speaking, the board looks really good together, which I'm uh, very glad about. Um, so I will finish off the video with a look at some of the uh, do's and don'ts that I think I'll mm. definitely implement next time. Um, and before that, I'm going to look at how I did the final um, water effects on the river, I to get that ripple effect, and take a look at how I finished off all the edging on everything, and uh, then dive into the lessons learned segment. All right, we're here with the river ripples stage. So the resin I did ages ago, and I think I definitely did it way too early because where I've done all the PVA sprays and the various flocks, etc., stuff is kind of stuck on the surface. So step one is gonna to be to get a manky old J cloth and wash this and wipe this down so that it's as clear as it can be. Um, if I put some water on, you can kind of see that underneath uh, the actual resin's fairly clear still, and you can see the stones, which has worked out really well. I'm going to do the ripples with Mod Podge gloss, so specifically the gloss one, so you get that nice shiny effect that you want with your water. I'm going to try applying it with a pipette um, to reduce the amount of bubbles that you get in the mix, although a lot of them do pop uh, during the process. Um, alternatively, obviously a paintbrush is absolutely fine. And the uh, trick, hack, whatever you want to call it, is to use a straw. Now you can use an airbrush if you've got one. And when we put the Mod Podge down, we're going to blow uh, the Mod Podge around on the surface to create random ripples. It was really good for water. Um, got a nasty plastic straw here, so if you've got a paper or a metal one or whatever, that's absolutely fine. Um, all you've got to do during use is to make sure to dab it on a bit of tissue every now and then so you don't get any liquid buildup um, to come off onto the piece. Um, so let's get started. Right, so you start by applying some Mod Podge gloss and it's actually pretty thick stuff. I don't think this pipette uh, approach is gonna work. So I'm immediately gonna bin off that idea put that in a pot of water. Right, so I'm gonna go in with the brush and just be very careful to make as few air bubbles as possible because although you want actually some bubbles in the water looks kind of realistic, um, too many can kind of ruin the look. So we put it on reasonably thick um, so you get a decent layer. Uh, you don't wanna put it on too thick because you'll actually find that it has trouble drying. Um, and now I should be working um, this end to this end, but it doesn't do very well for the angle for filming. So I'm gonna do it this way around to show you and then get on with doing it all myself. So now that I've applied it, I'm gonna go in with the straw and blow some ripples into the surface. And you can see that it kind of creates these waves um, which is what you want. Um, if you want it to be quite thick and to have a lot of uh, bumps and texture to it, I want it to be a slow running river, so it's not a problem like this. Um, you actually want to uh, put it on quite thick and then give it about 10 minutes to start to dry uh, and then do it after that so it's a lot thicker, so you get um, a lot denser, so you get good, good ripples. And actually I should be blowing in this direction because um, the river runs from the cave mouth at the top all the way down. But again, for filming this works best, but then I'm gonna go on now and uh, blow all of the, the water this way. So the ripples kind of go in the direction that the water would flow, although they still get this uneven surface, so it doesn't matter too much if you can't do that. So let's see how it comes out. It's had about 10 minutes worth of work, not too bad, and it's come out with some nice rippling. You can see here that they kind of go across the river and work their way down. I mean, they'll be less definitive once they dry, because obviously they go, they go clear, um, and then getting it right down here to the end. Because there's very little water flow here, because it didn't really put enough resin in in the end, um, I just kind of stippled this on with a brush and then blew the surface clear on top of the rocks so that it looks like it's kind of stagnanty water, but it's gonna be under the bridge anyway, so you'll only kind of see it at an angle, um, so you don't really have to fuss about it too much. But overall, pretty happy. There are a few little bubbles, um, which I couldn't quite get to pop, which is not an issue because uh, water naturally has bubbles and stuff in it anyway, as it's moving and, stuff breaks down under the water surface, etc. So overall pretty happy and uh, we're waiting to see what it comes out like tomorrow. Next job is to take the boards one at a time to the garage and spray primer the edges um, and paint them uh, up to the edge with black. And then that is the entire project done because up here you can see all the trees and scatter bits are also done. Too lazy to wait for it to dry so you can see a little bit still to set on the other piece but this was a video I took and it's looking nice and ripply. 
Right, temporarily back out in the garage for what is going to be a scary part of the project as everything is finished and I now need to black edge these pieces. Uh, painting these with an acrylic paint and a brush will take forever and the acrylic paint on its own won't take so well to the plastic surface so the only thing for it is primer uh, high coat matte black is the best primer you can buy anybody tells you otherwise is lying and because it's out in the garage it's a bit cold i've got my heat gun on standby to kind of help dry things a little quickly so i can move from one to the other and in order to make sure i don't spray any of my nice green work i've got a couple of rolls of masking tape that i'm going to try and just mask off the top so i have a very thin um, area that I actually need to paint with a brush which shouldn't be a much of a problem. Um, as I'm spraying in the garage, got my respirator with new filters and uh, going to give it a go and see how we do. Alright, so I've done a little test down here and it's working fine, so the can's been pre-warmed and ready to go. So I'm going to spray it a lot closer than I normally would. I'm just going to do a little bit on camera and then go and do the rest off camera with my respirator on probably shouldn't be shaking this while recording. Um, I'm going to come in a lot closer than I normally would and do very quick passes, making sure to spray downwards and making sure the overspray stays well on the tape. I don't want it to get even close to the edge. So I'm going to do it very carefully in short bursts. You don't need a lot of this to cover up. We're just trying to make sure we don't see the white plastic. I'm thinking about that is probably enough. And then I'm going to come in with the heat gun and it's going to be loud again, but I'm just going to gently put it across the surface just to help uh, take the wetness away so that I can get around the whole piece, um, put it to one side, well out the way of the spray, and then get the next piece on and try and get a fair few pieces done this evening, uh, hopefully to finish it tomorrow. So let's see how it comes out. I'm gonna start off by looking at the tiles that are in the city. Um, step number one, definitely wouldn't use plaster for the uh, actual base tiles. Uh, again, one, too heavy, um, two, they are too prone to potentially being chipped. I would in the future have either 3D printed these um, where the texture is not as nice as these Hearst Arts tiles. The texture on these are amazing. Um, potentially use a uh, plastic card or something similar if I can get one with a similar pattern that I wanted. Use wallpaper as well, um, which I'll come on to on a future project. The pattern is a little repetitive, um, which is okay in the city segment because it looks like organised flagstones. Um, these are usually intended for dungeon layouts where you want to be able to count the squares. Um, but what I definitely didn't want to do next time is I put all my terrain pieces on these EPVC boards, which are really good for basing your terrain. If I move the camera down here, you can kind of see that it just sits above the recess that I made um, because I ordered these boards based on what the gap should be on a, a five or was this six by nine inch gap. Obviously there's like a millimeter or two over where I put these on and they're not perfect because you do each tile one at a time. So these don't quite sit in them. They sit on top ever so slightly. Gaming wise, it's really hard to notice because you're looking downwards at them a lot of the time. You don't see that there's a bit of a raised thing. I could trim all the edges here to make them fit, um, but I don't really want to do that because they've got the plaster and stuff on top now. So it may crack um, under the force of trying to cut it um, and also make a hell of a mess. The powder and things that will come out will be white. It will go all over the terrain piece and trying to get it off will be a nightmare. So just going to live with it as it is. What I should have done and what I would do next time is what I did on this tile here where I actually, let's move the camera across, I actually um, have the building completely separate to the base piece and so that there's an allocated space for the building to go or another building potentially and so that it can be modern and packed away which is why I did everything in these tile layouts and can be switched around. I actually just have the building sit on top of a stone area. Now I know that this is only ever going to be this building um, so there's kind of like a little couple of bricks that hold everything in place um, but you can see it lifts off. What I would do is I would just tile this or texture with whatever you're going to do all the way across in like an area like this. And then if you want to put the blacksmiths down, plonk, the blacksmith goes down. You want to put the inn down. It's a different, slightly different shape, but still fits on the footprint. Boom, you can put the inn down. This is a much, much better way of doing it, I think, than having the um, recess pieces um, so that they uh, fit a lot nicer. 
Okay, now it's time to take a look at the canal. And overall, I'm really happy with how this segment came out. Um, what I did was uh, cut this quite deep, in fact, down to the baseboard. So I think this gap is now 50 mil, um, the recess. Uh, that is way, way, way too deep. Um, in this area, you don't need that much depth. Um, I think that the resin here is very thick. I was warned of this by my friend Dan um, from the uh, Bearded Gamers podcast after he did it on his Crisis Protocol board, um, which you should definitely check out on YouTube um, for loads and loads of good information. And he told me it's going to be way too heavy, and he was absolutely right. So I won't be doing that again. I would definitely make it shallower. And I did the base way too dark. Um, I'm going to try and get the camera down in there, so it's going to be shaky cam uh, time as I kind of get in there. And you really can't see the bottom through the resin. I did tint it. You can kind of see a little bit of it. Now you can see the green where I put in all the um, flock for the algae. Came out really well over there and over here. Brilliant. This doesn't need to be more than half a centimetre to a centimetre deep. Uh, the water, um, I've gone and done it way, way, way too thick. So the tile actually uh, weighs a ton, uh, which is a bit of a problem uh, when it comes to moving things around. My phone won't focus. Um, so it's not great because these tiles, so if I pan up to look at the park area, uh, those are 3D printed walls. Um, so they're super light. Um, this whole tile segment is very, very, very light because it's mostly polystyrene, which is a thin layer of the uh, of a plastic card on top to make this area um, and a few of the tiles at the top end up here. So overall, that one is significantly lighter and easy to pick up. This one weighs a ton, so I definitely would do it differently next time. With the water effects though, Unexpected Win was using the stones underneath. You can see, if I move the camera and pan it, you can see those stones on the riverbed. Um, I wish I'd done the rest of the riverbed a little brighter rather than doing it as dirt so it showed up a lot more, but these have come out really nice. Uh, ignore the slightly milkiness here where I was uh, spray painting in the garage, the uh, glue's picked up a bit of moisture, but it's almost already gone already. Um, the joint worked really well uh, where I decided to lean the two pieces up against um, each other and put them on a bit of an angle to make the, the resin flow this way and to have it go up against the black line that I drew on the ceiling tape. Uh, that worked really well because they're almost identical height. You, the gap is way less obvious here than it is on the rest of the board, which you can see here. Uh, addressing that gap, because I made these out of plastic um, and had them cut to size, which I showed early, early on in the series, um, the problem is where I assembled them, which they weren't tongue grooved or anything, they're not perfectly assembled. And then when I put foam inside with the expanding glue, um, they're kind of bowed a little bit. So you can see there are some gaps up here. Now these look much better painted with the black edging. So you don't see the white gaps in between, which is what they looked like before, which looked awful. Um, so I resolved that. And uh, the problem is uh, they don't quite line up, but because there aren't too many of them, um, it doesn't look too bad. Um, and once you step back and play the game again, you don't notice uh, that well, so it's fine. The bridge, um, I definitely would have the bridge fixed in place next time. Having it removable makes sense for packing away and for this stupidly heavy plaster bridge, um, but it doesn't quite fit right and doesn't look quite right. I would either have it mounted into the board permanently um, or, uh, or, or have it made of a different material. This plaster stuff is just way too heavy. The roads. Now, looking at the roads, they've come out okay. Um, these two were painted at different times, which was a mistake, uh, so they look slightly different. And I used a textured rolling pin on here. Again, I would go with wallpaper because they do a cobblestone-y effect. Wallpapers you can get are easy to cut and mount. Uh, these didn't come out perfect with the textured rolling pin, so I've had to cover a lot of the mistakes with dirt. Um, the dirt to hide the join between the sections, though, um, accidental uh, and totally worked out for me. So I'm going to do that again if I ever do roads um, to, to kind of master, master joins here. Right, these little circles, um, rings that I did with the MDF was an absolute win with the trees. So I'll get the trees down. They slot in and out um, and make it super easy for me to put a tree there or for it to be like a little rocky outcrop instead. If I can get one from the other part of the table um, without damaging everything and put it in place, you can kind of see it's super easy to interchange things. So that part worked out really well. Problem with the trees was, um, as much as they look really good um, like this, um, I'm not happy with how much latex I put on them. Um, as you can see here, where they did snap, yes, they are attached like the latex will do to hold it together, but they're just not quite robust enough. I think the mistake was 
I did one layer of latex uh, dipping or pouring, uh, whereas I should have done two or three to make them a lot more robust. So they're okay, but there are some, this one's not too bad. You can see there are some bits here where it's still attached, so it looks okay, but it, I don't know how long that's going to last, maybe six months worth of use, and I might be coming back to it. So I think what I'm going to do is probably in six months' time when I'm not sick of this project, um, is to come back and underneath doesn't look great. Um, so I'll probably put some glue in here, smush in some extra um, of the flocking to kind of bind the bottom together and really hold it onto the branch and make it... Uh, make it look better, but these armatures are the ways I will always do trees uh, from now on. Although the other good thing about these being on these circular bases is um, if I do any other terrain in the future, I haven't got to make more trees because I've got a whole bunch of trees. Okay, moving on to looking at the layout again, you can see the gaps I've mentioned already. What I definitely would do next time is where the roads are. I had all these side pieces cut out of uh, the plastic in strips like this, and then I had to build up this section to put the road in after I decided to how I was going to do the road layout. I think that was a mistake. I think I should have had thicker um, pieces here and attached them all together and then used a jigsaw or a knife or something to cut the profile out like this of the plastic card um, or the EPVC and all the way along so that it was uniform so that... Uh, I wouldn't have to then be building up with other strips like this that across the whole piece, again, don't quite line up. Again, you, your eye kind of ignores it, um, which is absolutely fine for gaming and it's going to be perfectly good for me to use. It's just when I'm getting critical about it, these are the things that I think, hmm, wouldn't do that again next time. Uh, the other thing I would definitely do is to, I think, actually... After the plaster and things went down on the board, before I did any paintwork, I really should have sanded everything. It's hard to tell because I blacked it out, but the edges are really kind of rough and uneven. Um, if I'd actually taken a bit of time to kind of sand it to meet the profile uh, of the edge piece, I think that would have been better. Um, I tried to go too deep here uh, with the divots, and you can kind of see that it's right up against the edge. So I would go for no deep uh, areas next to an edge because here and here kind of shows again i'm nitpicking at this stage but if you guys have been following along with the vlog and want to kind of borrow any of this information um these are the things you definitely don't want to do i showed them early on how i did them they definitely could be done better although the idea was a good one um i think implementation wise could have been done with a little bit more care uh the bushes have been a godsend for hiding mistakes um, and they look really good, like lining the road and stuff like that. Um, I think the variety really helps. So these come in three colours. And I had these static grasses from um, Gamers Grass. They're the best They're the best tufts. Um, and I think overall that kind of helps hide a lot of the problems and um, makes everything look varied, which is the key. So overall, I'm pretty happy. Um, I did also have this so that it fits my gaming table. So a little bit of a kind of a setup thing here is I have around the edge of my gaming table, and this is going to be super awkward to show. I think I might just have to reposition the camera one sec. What I'm trying to show is there's this recess all the way along uh, with this edging material here. This is to take my 40k gaming tiles, which are just on flat tiles. Um, there is no uh, like heavily recessed or raised up area so these don't quite go in again these were machine cut to order and they are the perfect size to fit flat uh, in the area um, unfortunately again where i put the sides on things have bulged and bowed slightly it doesn't actually fit within my gaming table like it was designed to um, so i have to put these little wooden chocks in the middle and um, to kind of stand everything up on um, because things aren't perfectly straight whereas if i look at a piece of my 40k terrain i'll just pull out the table storage here and um, they're on these tiles like this uh, they are exactly the right size and shape and they fit in snugly without any problems um, so because these uh, don't have any kind of um, if I'm looking at it from the side on you know these are quite thin whereas mine are quite deep and they kind of stick out a little bit like this so they don't quite butt up properly so um, not so uh, easily done in future I think I would actually buy pre-made boxes um, made out of MDF where they have the kind of uh, finger joints along the edges and hold everything nice and square and compact and you glue that up first and then you put your foam inside that way everything stays nice and square right so bring me back now for the final look one thing i do want to show if my mic lead allows me is that these do fit fairly well within the storage cupboard so i have these shelves 
Um, these are just the right height for the boards to go up on their end and go in sideways. So on one shelf I can fit six of these, on the next shelf it's two, and then all of the terrain. So the whole thing takes up just this much storage space in the cupboard, um, which is a godsend because uh, we don't have an infinite amount of space. Um, so the modularity and the storage solution part of it panned out really well. So that's it, I'm going front facing camera for the end because um, I just want to say that this is nine months worth of projects that I probably could have got done in about three months if I hadn't changed my mind maybe ten times. Um, but overall I think the move from using the plaster buildings here um, to this 3D printed stuff is really worth it. That is incredibly heavy. This weighs nothing and I'm not afraid of chucking it down like that and it falling over like that and becoming a problem. Um, whereas if it was plaster, it would have just crushed that piece of terrain and smashed itself on here and chipped everything and I'd be repainting it, which would drive me crazy. So durability wise, um, sorry, but it's plastic over plaster as nice as those molds are. So that's the end of this vlog. And uh, I think coming up soon, I'm gonna start my second vlog series on a new piece of terrain because um, I just can't stop making terrain. So hopefully this has been good for people to watch along. Hopefully you can borrow um, some of the information. Uh, I invented almost nothing new apart from uh, using the sponges to paint the 3D printed terrain. I think that's about the only thing that I actually came up with myself. Everything else is either Mel the Terrain Tutor or Luke from Geek Gaming uh, Scenics or Luke's APS as I've referred to him to a hundred times. He's on YouTube, you won't be able to miss him. You probably already know who he is. Um, and I use their techniques and information on uh, just about every stage. So uh, go check their stuff out and uh, have fun making something.